we go. Look at that. Oh man, the back of his legs. It's like the size of my head. Lots of crabs. You never know what creepy crawlies you're gonna find next to, I tell you what. Hello everybody, I'm Jackson Hawkins Kimmel. And I'm Jameson Hawkins Kimmel. And together, we are the Brothers Wild. It's 5.45 in the morning, and the tide pools of Northern California are right behind us. Tide pools have always been one of our favorite places to explore, not only because they're easy to access, but also because of their diverse marine life. Now searching for sea creatures is always a great adventure and you'll never know what you might come across. So, Jane, let's explore the Sumac State Park, the inspiration behind SpongeBob SquarePants, the cartoon we all love. Let's roll. Check this out, Jameson. That is an Aqua Sea Star, a first specimen of the Sumac Tide Pools. Now, do you notice something wrong with the starfish? It is missing one of its arms. Now, when a predator tries to eat a starfish, they can actually lose their arms and regrow them back. And what else is interesting is their arms, if they want, can regrow another body. These actually appear very soft, like you would think, but starfish, especially this species, feels like a barnacle, extremely rough to protect it from predators. Now, you can't really see because of the rocks, but on the bottom side, it has this, these things called tubed feet, and they use those to move around. They have thousands of them under their arms. Now, they get much bigger than this and are able to get at least several feet bigger than your head. Let's see if we can find one of those. Set them right back. All right, that is a cool find. Awesome I've never find. found a starfish with a missing arm before. Okay, everybody, we just scooped up this purple shore crab from right over the rocks over there. Now he only has one claw, just like that starfish, he's missing a claw. Crabs can regrow their legs too, just like sea stars. That is cool. Alright, send him back buddy. See how fast he'll skitter away. There he goes, alright, purple short crab. Awesome find, second species. Let's continue down the coastline. That, ow, that is ow, a- Ow, that's very rude. Oh, that is a- this purple shore crab. Look at the claws on that. Thing. I'm not sure if this is a striped shore crab or purple shore crab. I'm pretty sure it's a purple. Yeah, he's got some dark colors on there. Oh, that buddy is a big crab. <laughs> That's oh, about man. as big as they'll come. Look, you can see all the air coming out of his mouth. Crabs can breathe air too. Yeah, they can actually survive out in the air when the tide goes low for hours. All right, I'm gonna send him back. I found him right under this rock. That's where the crabs will be. Whoa. Like watch okay. your head right to those rocks. See? Eek. Don't want him to cut your finger. You better let him be. Look at this, guys. This may appear to be a rock, but this is actually a gum boot chitin. Look at that. Now we've seen many species of chitin, which are like these little snails that are up against the rock, but this is a lot different. This is actually the largest species of chitin in the world. Wow, look at that. Now usually, you know, to tell you some rocks, they'll have a reddish brown appearance and their skin is very rough, almost rhinoceros-like. Can I feel? Oh yeah, absolutely. Check Man, that it out. Feels, it feels like an alien. <laughs> it is alien-like. Now these aren't like other chitons. They're, they can't grip on the rocks as well, so they kind of wedge themselves in the crevices. So if a wave washes them on the shore, they roll onto their backs and they can't roll back onto this side. And unfortunately, the sun will bake them. Kill him. Luckily though, this guy is alive and an awesome type type will find. Set him right back where he was, Jax. Now this is actually my first time seeing a seeing gumboot. A gumboot. Now Jax, the great thing about tide pools is that you never know what's gonna be around the next corner. Jameson, check this out. I found another sea star. It's another new species for us. This is a dwarf modeled Henricia. Now they call it that because they're very small. They only get like a little bit bigger than this. You can see that mottled coloring too. That is awesome, buddy, right out in the open. That Man, is so cool. We've already found several species of sea star. This is great. So let's set them back 
I'm hoping for something a little more challenging to catch, like an octopus or maybe a prickleback. Well, I'm gonna check this pool over here for a nudibranch. Check this out, guys. I found another new species of sea star. This is a bat star. I think Jameson's got a second one over there. Oh, yeah. We're looking in this type of oak of oceans. I just saw that big orange sea yeah. star. Oh, wow. I've always wanted to see a bat star. Now what's cool about these is they feel like sandpaper. They're super rough, super rough sea stars. Absolutely, these get their name. These actually get their name because they have webbing between the arms, as you can see right here, just like a bat. Look at that. <laughs> that is cool. Just like other sea stars, these have no blood, heart, or brains. Pretty interesting, huh? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna set them back down, but man, there's so many sea stars here. What a bizarre creature. this out we found another leather star but they say the bottom of them smells like garlic and it does it smells does. like see it. it smells like you're cooking in the kitchen with garlic oh my gosh it smells just like when her mom makes garlic in the kitchen now Whoa. you see that right there that's its mouth that's what it eat through and when the starfish uh, digests its food it'll poop it out of that same hole pretty gross huh that's with all sea stars oh no oh. Set him back before he does it to us. I'm gonna show you right in there. Yeah, nice you, uh, star. you just stay yeah. down there, little buddy. We're gonna move on. Just found a nudibranch. Now these are type of sea slugs, and there are thousands of species. Over 50 of them can be found out here at Sume. And this one is the uh, what kind is it, Jameson? The opalescent nudibranch, a very colorful species. Most of them get very tiny. I'll make sure to not pick up nudibranchs because they're very fragile. So you could kill them if you pick them up. Let's see, I can get them on this piece of algae. You can see them a little bit right on my hand there. I don't want to hold them too, too long out of the water. Not only because he can't breathe, but also because he can sting me with his Soretta. Here we go. Let's see, I'm gonna place him right back there. Now those Soretta on his back can actually sting because when they eat anemones, they can store the stinging cells from its prey into the Soretta, which it also breathes out of. That is pretty creepy. That is awesome. That is so cool. I can't bank, it. man. Wow, he's beautiful. Jameson, check out the size of this purple sea urchin. That thing is a monster. Now, there were probably thousands of purple sea urchins, but only about like two or three inches, but I just found this little monster in here. Now, you can't see it because of this rock, but on the undersides, they have giant teeth, and they're like little grinders, and they use that to eat kelp, and these urchins will come in herds of thousands and can destroy entire kelp forests. It can be a nuisance but a cool creature at the same time. And blunt spikes, so you can pick them up. Yeah, not that sharp. So I'm gonna set them back, and as you can see, there's just thousands of these little purple sea urchins in there. Now I've got another new to break at my feet, a colorful diroma, but we're still looking for a bigger one. On to the next pool. Check out the size of that sea anemone, James. Whoa. Now you wanna hear a very creepy fact about sea anemones? They're capable of doing a thing called binary fishing. Now starfish are capable of this act too. It's a sexual reproduction where it literally splits in half and makes two bodies. Whoa, that is really creepy. <laughs> that is creepy. Here we go. Now watch this. It looks dead, but it's actually alive. I'm gonna touch it. It's gonna go back in there. Watch this. I'll try and get it. Look at that, look at that. Wow, that is actually its mouth right there. And on the back end is usually where its butt is. So if you see one, can you pick it up? It'll actually squirt water, which are fluids from its body, out of its butt. Pretty weird. Hey, Jax, any of the gum boots? Yeah, I know. Okay, look at this. I just scooped up. Looks like a blob, but this is actually a clown doid. 
probably the second largest nudibranch you could find out here. They also call them sea clowns. Oh yeah, sea clowns. Because they look like clowns. They can get up to half a foot big. Now see, watch how I'm place them back on the algae. Look at that, he gets all of his color back. Look at that. That is so cool. That is the biggest nudibranch we found today. I gotta keep looking here. Because if you know if you just squat down and watch the seaweed, you'll see probably dozens of nudibranchs. But this is something interesting. You know that okra star we filmed earlier with missing arm? It was orange. But they're actually also known as the purple sea star because their natural color is dark purple. It's very pretty. And opera sea stars mostly eat barnacles, which don't affect their color. But some individuals eat a more variety of prey, such as mussels, which are believed to have an orange hue. So some okra stars will have more varied colors, such as orange, red, or brown. That's pretty interesting. Man. Look at this, everyone. We've just found two very pretty, but also common species of nudibranch in the tide pools. And one of them is the opalescent nudibranch, and the other, the thick horn nudibranch. Often mistaken. But the ways to tell them apart, the opalescent nudibranch will have orange serretta with white tips, and the thick horn will have gray and black sides with an orange tip. Pretty awesome, huh? You know what I've just caught? I've caught another new species of sea star. This is a Pacific blood star. Whoa! He is certainly going to make the star of the day. What do you think, Jackson? I think so. Now, we've seen a lot of bats and leathers, but haven't seen a blood star yet. That is really cool. Look at that. I always like to make fun shapes for the stars. Looks like he's kind of waving right there. Yeah, it does. Yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> now, now there's, there's only one right sea back. star out here to find, and that's a sunflower star, which I've never, also never seen before. Whoa, that would be a treat, but tide's coming in a little bit. we got to get as far as we can. Let's keep going. That right there Whoa. is probably the most creepy creature in the starfish family. This is a brittle star. Now there are dozens of species of brittle star. Well, actually probably hundreds, but out here there's several. I'm not sure what kind this is specifically, but this is my first time ever seeing a brittle star. How'd you find it, buddy? Well, it was over there in the kelp, and I kind of just was searching the kelp, and I turned it by, and there was just this Little star crawling around in there. What an awesome find. That is so cool, buddy. High five. Nice. Yeah. Now, these are very ambidextrous, so they can move around a lot faster with each arm, so they're a lot quicker than sea stars. Whoa. All Guess right, you gotta gonna, be quick to catch them. We're gonna, is, we're gonna set them back. That is certainly an awesome sight you can find in the tide pools. One of the best things to see. That is so cool. Whoa. You never know what creepy crawlies you're gonna find next here, I tell you what. This is a huge crab. Might be the biggest you can find in the tide pools. Whoa, those pictures are pretty good. I got a technique. Push them out, and then, and then, whoa, we got them. Look at that. That is a Pacific rock wow, crab. I really don't want them to pinch me right now. Look at the air ah, bubbles. Ah, he's really getting me. Look at the air bubbles coming out of his mouth. Look at that. Right, I'm going to get closer for a better shot. There we go. Look at that. Oh, man, the back of his legs really getting my skin. Ooh, he's defensive. All right, let's put him back. That's a cool fight. Oh, boy, he's reaching. You know, that's the trick of crabs. If you get him by the butt, they can't get you with the big pinchers. Either that or you grab him by the top like a crayfish. They can't get you that way either. All right, little boy. Wow, that was a good find. I almost stepped on it until I saw these giant claws reaching out. Hey guys, I just wanted to share a quick thing with you. So that I've just found another gumboot. Now this is the largest species of chitin in the world, like we said, but here's something interesting. There are many species of chitin, but all of them are usually around that size, so only a few inches. But the gumboot, for whatever reason, gets like the size of my head. Man, look at this comparison here. How much bigger it is than its smaller cousins. That is a cool fact. All right, I'm gonna place them back. All right, let's go. 
Lots of crabs. So that thing that the seagull is eating, I thought it was a dead seal. It's actually a dead octopus. Tell me by the size, it's probably a giant Pacific octopus, because look how big it is. We're gonna see if we can get closer. Oh, man. Yeah, so this is a giant Pacific octopus. Now up here at Sumeg, there are two species. This, the giant Pacific, and the East Pacific red octopus. This one is the giant. I can see tell by the size. Oh, so cute. Look at that. These tubes are bigger than my thumb. They're like suction cups. Oh man, that's too bad. Wow, we really got to see what it looks like in person though. Wow. I can't believe all right. that. Alright, Seagull, he's all yours. You got him? I've got whoa, a sea lemon. Oh my gosh, look at that little thing. Now this is probably the largest nudibranch you'll find out here in the tide pools. Now these aren't alioids, these are doids. And I just saw him right sit, sitting there right on the rock. Oh, you can see that foot. You can see the foot. That's what it uses to move with. But inside that foot, you could also feel a hard piece of like what you would call a stone. That's where all of its organs are contained, so they stay protected. All right, I'm gonna set him back. Oh, oh, wow. Great find, that is awesome. Sea lemons are, a good in, are an indicator of good environment, so we know we're in one. Let's go over here and keep looking for stuff. This was bigger than the last one. This is a blood star right here. Is it a Pacific blood star, Jay? Oh yes, probably one of the most uncommon species you can find here at Sumeg Tide Pools. We saw that wow. tinier one yesterday, so but this one's pretty big. Here, buddy, you check them out. You hold them. Don't let them stick to your hands, though. Now, he does feel similar to the bat stars, like very sandpapery, very rough. That is cool. That is All so right, Jame, cool. set him back. The tide's coming in. Sure, buddy. Got to head back. Yeah, we got to move in a little bit. There we go. There he is. Awesome find. Nice, Jame. Yeah. The day marks the end of our trip to Northern California here at Patrick's Point. Typically an inaccessible, very rocky shoreline, this is an incredible ecosystem. For when the tide goes out, a whole new world of sea creatures is unveiled. With thousands of tide pools lining the shore, we were incredibly successful and recommend all of you to get yourselves out here at Sue Meg State Park. I'm Jameson Hawkins Kimmel. And I'm Jackson Hawkins Kimmel. And, and together, together we are the Brothers Wild. Bye, everybody. Keep it wild.